Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're doing a compression masterclass. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. How compressors affect the frequency response. Before you even begin to compress your signal, a compressor might be affecting your audio by subtly altering its frequency response. For example, an FET emulation may subtly attenuate the highs, or a tube compressor might dip lows and the highs. Now, this all depends on how the plugin was designed. If we look at the FabFilter Pro C2, we see that even when emulating an optical compressor or a bus compressor, which emulates a VCA type compressor, the frequency response isn't affected. Instead, only the compression behavior is what's changed. Let's listen to some different compressor types without actual attenuation occurring to see if we can hear the subtle differences in the frequency responses. How compressors distort the signal. Different compressor emulations will have different points at which they begin to distort your signal. For example, if we run a 100 Hz sine wave through an FET compressor, we'll notice subtle third and fifth ordered harmonics, which become more aggressive with a faster attack and release time. On a digital compressor or a non-emulation compressor like the Pro C2, we get moderate harmonics with the clean option, aggressive harmonics with the punch style, and no harmonics with the mastering style. Now keep in mind that how much you compress will also affect the harmonics respective amplitudes and formations. Let's take a listen to it. Real quick, for exclusive advanced videos, future plugin presets, samples, MIDI packs, and more, join with the link in the description and become a member. FET Compressors in Depth Now that we understand some points about all compressors, let's look at each one in detail. FET compressors utilize transistors for their compression, but since we're covering emulators in this video, let's focus more on functionality. The compressor's attack ranges from 20 microseconds to 800 microseconds. The release ranges from 50 milliseconds to 1.1 seconds. We get five ratio settings, four to one, eight to one, 12 to one, 20 to one, and an all button, which is program dependent and will range from 12 to one to 20 to one. This version also offers a side chain section in which you can determine if you want the lows to trigger compression, the highs to trigger compression, how the incoming signal is detected and more. Due to this compressor's quick attack, it's always gonna slightly distort the signal, meaning it emphasizes transients. This makes it great for drum overheads, parallel compression, and anything you want to give an aggressive sound. Let's take a listen to it. Tube Compressors in Depth Let's look at an emulation of the Retro STA since it's a popular one. The ratio is more or less fixed at a non-linear 3 to 1, but this is variable depending on the level of the incoming signal. The release ranges from 2 to 8 seconds. That said, both the attack and release can be sped up by increasing the mode value, but no matter what, both stay pretty slow and smooth sounding. At single mode, the attack is too slow to respond to transients, allowing for some transient retention. This compressor is almost like the opposite of the 1176 in that it'll reduce detail and punch, instead causing smooth compression. Let's take a listen to it. VCA Compressors VCA compressors are where you begin to see the threshold become controllable. 
Additionally, this compressor uses RMS detection instead of peak, meaning that the threshold and detection are measuring the average loudness, not the loudest point of the waveform. This causes compression that closely emulates how the human ear compresses sound. But know that not all VCA compressors use RMS detection. Since the DBX165 uses a soft knee, our threshold goes above 0 dB, but the curve can still very gradually cause attenuation. Our attack and release times can range pretty drastically and can result in both a smooth and punchy sound. Let's take a listen to the compressor. Optical Compressors The LA-2A limiting amplifier has a fixed attack of 10 milliseconds, but the photo cell it uses, or in this case emulates, gives it a unique program-dependent release. The first half of the attenuated signal is released after 60 milliseconds, but the other is released between 1 and 15 seconds later. How long it takes for this other half to be released depends on the frequency and the amplitude of the detected signal. Now, this unique character makes it great for vocals and bass since you retain some transient detail, but you get a fuller sound due to the extended release of the second half of the attenuated signal. Let's take a listen to it. Digital Compressors Modern digital compressors are essentially a combination of all of the compressor settings and technologies of the past. They let you mix and match all of the different functions that we covered, as well as add some new ones in. They're by far the most versatile compressor plugins to use. With them, we can quickly emulate multiple compression attack and release types and control how much harmonic distortion occurs. Additional functions like look ahead allow the compressor to measure the incoming signal prior to processing it, causing more transparent compression. We often get a sidechain section, which allows us to determine what triggers the compression. Let's take a listen to it. If you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button since it really helps us out and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest releases. Upward Compressors A newer form of compression that I like to use a lot but doesn't get discussed too often is upward or low level compression. Instead of compressing from the peaks down, it compresses from the noise floor up. This means we don't affect our peaks or cause harmonic generation. Instead, we increase the quietest details of the signal. I like this type of compression a lot since it's a great way to increase detail, but it doesn't reduce transients like most other compressors. The only downside is that it's gonna increase the level of your signal's noise floor. Let's take a listen. attack, release, and harmonics. Now that we understand the different compressor types, let's look at how and why the attack and release functions on downward compressors cause or avoid distortion. As we covered earlier, shorter attack and release times increase the amplitude and sometimes number of harmonics, while longer times do the opposite. The reason being, at short enough attack and release times, the compressor is working faster than the full length of the waveform. So let's explain how this happens. Since 1 hertz equals one full oscillation per second, we can say that a 50 hertz wave has 50 oscillations in one second. Let's divide 1000 milliseconds, or one second, by these 50 oscillations to see how long one oscillation takes. 1000 divided by 50 equals 20 milliseconds per oscillation. 
With that said, if our attack or release is shorter than 20 milliseconds, it will likely cause distortion to any waveforms 50 hertz or higher. Now that's why the 1176 with its 20 to 800 microsecond attack time almost always causes distortion. Let's take a listen to different attack and release times. Quality of compressor plugins. Last up, let's talk about how different plugins are designed with different levels of quality. Let's look at Logic Stock Plugin and observe the harmonics that it forms. We notice that we get an aggressive amount of harmonics with just about every compressor emulation type, with maybe the exception of Platinum Digital. But if we switch to Studio VCA, we see a lot of high ordered harmonics, which often have a harsh and unwanted sound. We can even see comb filtering caused by phase cancellation. Now what's causing this is aliasing distortion. Since the compressor wasn't designed too well, it distorts high frequencies. Without oversampling, which the plugin doesn't introduce, harmonics generated from these distorted high frequencies have nowhere to go and are reflected back down the frequency spectrum. Now what's worse is that these harmonics can be disharmonious with the key of our song. So in short, be sure to use a compressor that uses oversampling and filtering to avoid this issue. Let's take a listen to this plugin in particular to see if you notice a difference. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Also, join and become a member for exclusive advanced videos, future plugin presets, samples, midi packs, and more. Thank you so much for watching.